Welcome Algebra 1 students. We're in lesson 13 today. We're going to talk about symbols of inclusion first. So symbols of inclusion, that's a fancy way of saying your parentheses and your brackets. So we know our order of operations at this point is called uh, PEMDAS, right? It's, that's the acronym we use that tells us what order to do things in. And we know that the first step in PEMDAS is parentheses. Well, within that first step um, of parentheses, there's actually different levels of operations that you can do. And we already know about parentheses called a square bracket. And then there's a level up from that called a curly bracket. And my curly bracket is atrocious, but that's kind of what it looks like. And all of those can be found on your keyboard. In fact, the curly bracket and the square bracket are on the same key. The one in the front, the pair in the front are on the same key. Um, you press the key for this one, um, hold down your shift, same thing for this. They're right next to each other. So this button is next to this button. And then these are up in your number line on your keyboard um, because you use them the most, right? Those are the most common. So with the parenthesis order of operation, what you're going to always do is look for the parenthesis first. And that's why we call it the parenthesis operation. It's because we want to do the innermost. I'll give you an illustration of that. So here I'm going to give you a problem. Let's see if I can find you a really good one to do. Here we go. Here's one that has all of the symbols of inclusion. So it is, I think I'm going to use the one I found first. All right, so here we have three and then a curly bracket. If I can get my pen here to cooperate with me. All right, curly bracket. And then we have a two and a square bracket and a parenthesis and a negative four minus three. Negative eight minus two minus four. And then we close the square bracket and then we close the curly bracket as well. And sometimes that's not the way it works. A lot of times it's the way it works. I'm going to read all that. Um, but you can uh, sometimes have more operations after the square bracket between that and the curly bracket. But this problem just ends it right there. So the parenthesis operation tells us to look for the parenthesis first. That's why it's named that. So we go to our parenthesis first and we perform those operations. And the reason we have these multiple symbols of inclusion here, the, the Chris of the parenthesis, is to tell you outside of the other operations what needs to happen in what order. It's kind of like um, overruling the typical operation sequence. It's like um, placing extra controls and giving you options, right? It's given um, in order to find a result. So in this case, we're going to perform negative four minus three first, and that's gonna be a negative seven. And then we're gonna perform this set of parentheses, and that's gonna be a negative 10. Now notice there's no ops thing to do is the multiplication. So once we've got these solved, we can perform that. So negative seven times a negative 10, remember to, um, we multiply here two negatives gives us a positive. So we are going to write that in a parenthesis just to keep it all contained the way they had it. It's going to be a positive. It makes sense and we can keep it in an orderly sequence. We don't want to, you know, jump the gun on anything. So now we have a positive 70 minus four. We've already done everything within this parenthesis. So technically, because there is no, oh, wrong one, because they that parenthesis, we've tackled it and moved on. Now, one of the things that you can do once you get rid of the parenthesis is if you have any others, you can rewrite them as parenthesis. You don't have to, you can leave them as the bracket just so you don't. Um, so now our innermost symbol of parenthesis is the square bracket. So 70 minus four, that is going to be 66. So now what we have is three 
times 2 times 66, right? So this is, brain is not big enough to do that in my head. I'm going to use my calculator. So 66 times 2 is equal to 132. So now I have 3, and I've eliminated the square bracket, 132, because we've eliminated this symbol of inclusion, the square bracket, is 3 times 132. And so I would multiply that. That would be 6. That would be 9. That would be 3. So 396 would be my final answer. But you can see how we started with the innermost set of parentheses and the, um, that we do not follow the order of operations. Let me give you an example. I'm going to clear the page. The only time we don't follow that is to say negative 2 times um, positive 4 uh, let's say plus 2. Let's just do that. Alright, so the only time we don't follow so we have parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. This fraction line is a division symbol. We know it means to divide. But because of the way it is written, it means to divide everything on the top by everything on the bottom. All right. In our brain, 3, 2 plus 4 divided by negative 2 4 plus 2. That is not the same thing. Instead, it's more like this. It's like its own, the, the fraction line is its own inclusion symbol. It says to do everything here, like these square brackets, and then everything here on the bottom. Everything in the numerator first, then everything in the denominator first. So the fraction line is another um, inclusion symbol, you could say, and want you to complete that before you do the division. So we would treat it, if we wanted to rewrite this, we would treat it like a set of, another set of brackets. Whatever the last set of bracket was, which in this case was parentheses, you would bump it up to the next set. So if we had a square bracket up and put a parenthesis in order to write this as a expression, excuse me, instead of a fraction. So that's what we're seeing when we look at a fraction like this, is that all of the time we put PEMDAS out of order with this division is by it being in a fraction, it is treated like its own symbol of inclusion or separation, however you want to look at it. Okay, so moving on, um, let's look at products of sign numbers, which we've already kind of, you know, kind of hinted at with that previous. I'm just going to do a bunch of symbols of inclusion here just for funsies to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. When we have multiple negative signs, it can get really confusing as to whether or not it is a positive or a negative, what's going on here. So there's a couple of different ways that you can handle this. One of that, you know how you have that, and let's say you have a group of people and they all kind of have that person they have a crush on and they're happy, right? And let's say you have five friends going somewhere together and three of them are boys, and, or it'll say three of them are girls and two of them are boys. And the two girls and two of the boys are doesn't have a guy to kind of hold hands with and crush on. And so she's kind of the fifth wheel, right? And she, so she's kind of negative. She's kind of, she's kind of sad over there by herself. It works the same way with the negative symbols. When they're by themselves, they're kind of sad, right? Um, and I like to think of them as couples. So when they're by themselves, they're sad that they, you know, they like together, they become happy because they're paired up, right? So here's a negative sign. We take the other negative sign. And now let's say they're, they get married and they're in holy matrimony. That's why it's a cross. That's my, that was my logic as a kid is that's why the plus sign was a cross. It was because they're, 
um, they're not going to bring everybody down because they don't have a date to the event or whatever it is. So you can think of your negative signs the same way. Pair them up and they become positive. Okay, that's one way to think about it. All right, I'm going to clear all that out. So that's just a, a, and then they can be happy and everything's all positive. All right, there's a little story I told myself to remember that. So even number of negative signs equals a positive. But if you had an odd number, an odd number means somebody was left out, main negative. They bring the whole crowd down because they're like, I wish I had a boyfriend or I wish I had a girlfriend. Don't you have a friend that's cute? You know, so that's just, <laughs> that was my brain at that time of life. But it helped me to remember. So if you have a little trick like that, that helps you to remember those types of things and those types of rules, use that to your advantage. All right, you can do it mathematically, and I'm going to show you that as well. So whenever you have a negative outside of a set of parentheses, that's really a one living there. That's an invisible one living there. So what you do is you're going to multiply that times what's in here. So a negative one times a negative two. We know that pairs of negatives make a positive. So negative one, two, right? So we just eliminated... And that is a horrible, horrible curly bracket, Miss Tracy. Oh my goodness, why did you draw that? So we eliminated that. We paired them up, and now we made a positive. All right, so now we have another negative one living outside of this square bracket. Negative one times a positive two. Well, that's going to be a negative multiplication operation there. And so now we have a negative one times a negative two, and we know an opposite of an opposite, that's going to be another positive. So we have a positive two is our result, which we could have gotten just by counting the number of negatives. And that is a faster way to do it. And it's a, it's not better. It's just faster. And it gives you, um, you can solve it quickly. So if it's, you know, if it's overwhelming and you're like, I can't remember that, just put your invisible one in there, right? And that is a trick we'll use as we continue on in algebra to help us see when we need to multiply and when we need to change signs. So if you need to do that, do that. Put that little, anytime you have a negative sign, you remember to do the math correctly. All right, and that is all we have for lesson 13. I have a couple of practice problems and we're gonna do those. Now, I have five here within 13. We didn't do 13.1 or 13.2, but we'll do 13.3 because it has first and foremost, let's, I'm going to pause and write them up here. And then um, I want you to work them with me. Okay. All right. So here we have five problems that we're going to solve. And we're going to do them in a little bit different way. We're going to figure out whether they're positive or negative before we actually solve them um, or do anything mathematically with the numbers. So looking at this problem, we have one, two negatives. The rest of these are positive. So because we have a pair that's an even number, we know that the answer is going to be a positive. So we're just going to do that first. Here we have three positives. And it doesn't matter how many positives you have. When a problem asks you, um, I've got this many positives and this many negatives, uh, is the answer positive or negative? It doesn't matter how many positives. Um, positive people, they'll stay positive until a negative affects them. I remember that. People are happy until something bad happens. And sometimes it's, you know, it's a negative thing when something bad happens. So people will... The numbers will stay positive. People will stay positive until they have a reason to be negative, usually. So it doesn't matter how many positives you have. Look for that odd number of negatives. That's going to tell you what you have. So in C, we have an odd number of negatives. So we have one, two, three negative signs. So that's going to be a negative answer, whatever that is. In D, we have one, two, three, four, five negatives. And they're all being multiplied against each other, right? 
So we have, if we multiply these two together, the, we have symbols of inclusion here. So this would be a positive, right? Then we have two here, that'd be a positive. This would be a negative number. This will be a positive number. So positive times negative, that's gonna be a negative, right? All right, so down here, we have a little bit different symbol of inclusion and we have an operation in between them. So we have to look at these numbers separately. So this would be a negative number and two times this would be a negative number. But we don't know if this is gonna be positive or negative, just know what the value is going to be here. Um, I can guess, I know that two times three here and two times three here, um, this is another number multiplied by that, so it can't be zero, right? This is gonna be the bigger number. And the bigger number is gonna be negative, and this is gonna be negative. So probably doing that logic, it's probably gonna be negative. Let's just take an educate and let's see what we have. All right, so negative four times negative three, that gives me a positive 12. And I like to just write it down there while I'm doing it. 12 times two is 24. Uh, 24 times five is above my pay grade, but I believe that's 120. Um, 120 times six. All right, so way, the way I do that is 72, and then I tack the zero onto it. So it'd be 720. So it is a positive 720, right? Because we already got the positive 12 here. So this one, this is three times two is six, and six times six is 36. It's a positive 36. We didn't really have any struggle with that. So now let's look at this one and make sure we have that negative. So negative three times negative two, we know that's a positive six because we have two negatives and they cancel each other out, right? Now they're happy together because they're paired up. Six times six is 36. Uh, 36 times four, let me see, that'd be four times six is 24 carry two. And that's going to be 12 plus that two we carried, that's 144. That's a four, I promise. So now negative two times 144 is gonna be negative 288. So yes, we were right, negative sign right there. So let's look here and see what we have. A negative times a negative is positive, so that's gonna be a positive six. And then now that we have that taken care of, we can just move down the line. So six times a negative five is going to be a negative 30. Negative 30 times a negative seven, that's gonna be a positive 210. Because seven times three is 21, and we just tack that zero on the end of it. And 210 times a negative two is gonna be a negative 420. So positive times negative, there you go. All right, so now let's look down here at E. So negative three times negative four is gonna be a positive 12. Positive 12 times a negative two is a negative 24. Well, two times negative three is gonna be six. So if we have a negative 24 and this is a negative six, that actually changes the symbol to where we have negative 24 minus six. So when we have two um, signs, if the signs are the same, we add the numbers together and keep the sign, right? So 24 plus 6 is going to be 30, but it is a negative 30. All right, so that is how we handle those positive negatives. We count them, we use logic to figure them out in regards to the number of negatives that we have. And then down here, we figured out this would be probably be a bigger number here than this would be. So even, even if this was taken away from here, this would still have overruled and been the bigger number, so our answer would have been a negative. And then turns out we didn't account for, or I didn't account for the fact that this was a positive, so it would make this negative anyway. So we'll just add to it. All right, so that is all we have for lesson 13. Um, be sure to write down some type of system um, that explains to you how the symbols of inclusion work, right? We know that we start with all the parentheses, then we do the brackets, then we do the curly brackets, right? That's our symbol of inclusion. And then be sure to write down some type of system for yourself 
the note that I made even that even number negatives equals a positive and an odd number they feel all left out and they remain negative those are the things that you need to take away from this lesson and that's all I have I'll see you in lesson 14